Hey yo! My name is Justin, aka Shinky, and this is Shinky JRPGs. Every series has that one game that kicks it into stardom status. For Legend of Heroes, it was Cold Steel. For Megami Tensei, it was Persona 4. And for the Tales series, it was Tales of Symphonia. Tales of Symphonia was originally released in August of 2003 for the Nintendo GameCube. With its sudden change from sprite-based graphics, it adopted a beautiful cel-shaded artwork. Tales of Symphonia skyrocketed into popularity. Even until today, it's commonly on people's top 10 JRPGs of all times list. With good reason too, it's the perfect package. It has great characters, it has a great story, and it's all presented wonderfully. For this review, I will be reviewing the PlayStation 4 Remastered port. But before we get into the review, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It might not seem like much, but it really helps out the channel. Anyways, pop that corn and ice your drink, and let's jump onto this review for Tales of Symphonia Remastered. Have you ever taken a look at the grand list of console RPG cliches? Well, Tales of Symphonia hits 90% of these cliches. Tales of Symphonia may quite possibly be the most cliched RPGs to ever exist. Teenage male hero that starts the game by sleeping in? Check. Boy falls asleep in class. Hero's hometown gets destroyed early in the game? Check. Isalia gets set on fire within the first hour. Main heroine has a legendary pendant and is either meant to save the world or destroy it? Check. Colette's Crucius Crystal fits this category to a T. I'll link the list in the video description because it's actually a really interesting and fun read, if not a bit humorous. This being said, despite how cliched Tales of Symphonia is, it is still a very entertaining game and has a really good story with some of the most memorable characters in any RPG. The basic story is that one day, the Tower of Salvation appears, which is the signal that it's time for the Chosen to go on a pilgrimage across the land to visit elemental shrines to awaken the Summon Spirits. See what I mean by cliched? The same concept happened in Final Fantasy X. Anyways, back to the story. Eventually, the party makes their way to the Tower of Salvation, complete the pilgrimage, ultimately sacrificing the Chosen and restoring the world to its former glory. Here, they find out that Silverot has a parallel world, so to speak, called Tethayala, with its own Summon Spirits and its own Chosen. It turns out that each of these worlds are sharing a single source of mana, and the pilgrimage is the process of moving the mana from one planet to another. So naturally, while one world is flourishing, the other is waning. At the surface, it seems pretty basic, but it turns out that this whole thing is organized by an organization named Crucius, who is doing this whole sacrificing the Chosen to find an adequate vessel for the leader Mythos' sister Martel, who died 4,000 years ago, and to create a world without racism. As half-elves are not welcome anywhere, humans don't want anything to do with half-elves, and elves feel the same way. I won't go further into the story at this point, as a risk of serious spoilers, but the story does start to feel a bit more unique after this, and in traditional Tales fashion, the characters really do drive the story along. Character development, while handled decently in the main story, really shines in the skit system. Tales of Symphonia was the first time that skits really appeared in the Tales series in the West and focused on character development. We had them in Tales of Eternia, but for the most part, they were more just directional skits telling you where to go next. So anyways, skits are simple little conversations between the characters that either direct you where to go in the story, tell you what the characters are thinking, or just incredibly silly conversations that make next to no sense but dive into the personalities of the characters. They're fun, they're interesting, but unfortunately they didn't get any English voice acting. Luckily, the remastered release does have dual audio, and if you decide you prefer the Japanese voices, these skits are voiced in Japanese. I personally prefer English voice acting since that's what I originally experienced the game with on the GameCube, so it has that nostalgia factor there, but if you prefer Japanese, the option is always there. Gameplay is always my favorite part of every Tales game. The story is always great, and the characters really carry the game, but the gameplay? I'll never get sick of Tales battle systems. Unless it's Tales of Zestiria, but we'll cover that battle system when we get to it. 
Anyways, back to the combat system of Tales of Symphonia. The official name of Tales of Symphonia's battle system is MLLMBS, or Multi-Line Linear Motion Battle System. Tales of Symphonia was the first transition from a strictly 2D battle system to a 3D battle system. Now, the battle system isn't entirely 3D. Your enemies and characters are placed on a 3D field. But when you target an enemy, a 2D line is formed and you can only run left and right along that line. Free running around the 3D field wasn't introduced until Tales of the Abyss in 2005. Personally, while I miss the classic style of battles in the strictly 2D Tales games, Symphonia is still a very enjoyable time with a very smooth battle system. Battles are generally the same as Tales of Eternia, except you have multiple lines in the sense that you can do regular attacks, a link from level 1 text to level 2 text, and then finally a level 3 tech, resulting in many different combos for physical tech users. Or you have spellcasters, which are still the same as they've always been. They stay in the back lines, chanting their spells to unleash fiery destruction, fierce hurricanes, or simply dump an avalanche of rocks on your enemies. And then you also have support and healing spells. One thing I really like about spellcasters, outside of the basic level spells, the higher tier, so tier 2 and tier 3, they all have their own unique incantations. Some of them are great, like Indignation. I you call upon me no. in the land of the you dead to unleash thy fury of Back. thunder. Indignation! Back. Or you have things like Stalagmite, where Genius out of nowhere just yells that it's pancake time. I have no idea what this has to do with rocks shooting up from beneath you and skewering you from underneath, but it still makes me laugh every time I hear it. One of the unique aspects of the battle system is the T and S system, or technical or strike system. Depending on your EX skills, which I'll get into shortly, your character will lean towards either a T side or an S side. Each side teaches different techs, and you can't have both of them at the same time. For example, with Void, if you're someone who enjoys high-hitting combos, you might lean towards T-type, learning multi-hitting techniques like Hurricane Thrust or Sword Rain Alpha. Whereas if you decide to go S-type, you will learn techniques like Supersonic Thrust or Sonic Sword Rain. Each side has its uses, and it depends on your preferred playstyle. Luckily, if you decide you want to change what techniques you're using, you can delete your learned text and swap to the other skill set and learn that set. Anyways, as I mentioned before, EX skills. It was a new feature of Tales of Symphonia. Each character can learn up to 4 EX skills from level 1 to level 4, and you can learn any combination of levels. So you can have 1 level 1 and 3 level 4s, or you can have 3 level 4s, or you can have 1 from each level, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It really depends what you want to do. Each EX skill has individual uses, such as increasing max HP, increasing movement speed in towns and dungeons, or letting you cast spells faster. They also have some very unique ones each to themselves, such as, for some reason, Colette can name dogs, Genus increases the effects of cooking, or you have Zelos, the playboy chosen from Tefeala, who will talk to a woman and they will give him an item. It can be things like apple gels, it can be beef, it can be anything. I still find it funny, you just randomly talk to a woman and they're like, here, you're nice, have some beef. Anyways, let's get back to EX skills. So the true use of these EX skills is if you have the correct ones on there, you will get a combination EX skill. These are where they really shine. Combination EX skills can be incredibly powerful, such as preventing you from staggering when you get hit, increasing experience, letting you store spells to come out after a regular combo, that's my favorite with the Magic Swordsman characters. Or even letting you use certain techs in midair. They're incredibly fun and gives you a good reason to mix and match your EX skills and experiment. How does the game look? Well, judge it for yourself. You can see the footage on screen. I think Tales of Symphonia looks absolutely gorgeous. Cell shaded art styles, they don't seem to age. After playing Symphonia more than 20 years later, the game still holds up graphically to current games. The game is bright, the game is colorful, and it almost feels like you're watching an anime. Which is funny, because Tales of Symphonia did get its own anime. The art style of Tales of Symphonia has aged so much better than even other games in the series. For example, 
Have you seen Tales of Legendia? The game went with 3D models, it has dull colors, and oof. Just oof. But that's a story for another time. Just so you know, that's the next Tales game I'm reviewing, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Though, as gorgeous as the game is, the game is still a game from 2003. As such, after being upscaled on modern day hardware, certain things get noticed that were not as noticeable as they were back on the GameCube. The most noticeable aspect is overworld tiling. When walking around on the world map, you can see where one tile ends and the other begins. It's not so bad that it ruins the game, but it does stand out when you notice it. You do somewhat have to go out of your way to see it, but like I said, you do notice it. I mostly noticed it on the mountainside outside of Hima, and when walking from Isalia to Triot. Another thing I noticed is how much lower quality the background of battle scenes are, as opposed to the actual ground that you run around on in battles. It almost seems like a backdrop is just copy and pasted onto the screen. Again, this is just something that comes to light with the increase in resolution and increased quality of monitors that we have access to as opposed to 20 years ago. It's just one of those things that you can't unsee once you notice it. It's fine, but I do wish that Namco Bandai did put a bit more effort into a remaster of one of the most beloved titles in the series. How about the music and sound of Tales of Symphony? Well, Tales of Symphonia, like most Tales titles, is composed by Matoi Sakuraba, which I may be slightly biased towards. Sakuraba is one of those composers that produced most of the music of video games from my childhood. Star Ocean, Tales series, Valkyrie Profile, the list goes on. I would go ahead and say that Tales of Symphonia is probably one of Sakuraba's most memorable works. Zelia, Daris Carlon, the Human Ranches, and even the Ymir Forest. Despite how much I hate that despicable forest, they all have amazing tunes that stick out as top tier themes. I haven't even touched any of the many battle themes. This game has so many battle themes. Like other music in the game, the battle themes stick out as some of the greatest battle themes in the series, and there are so many of them. Silverant has one theme, Ethel has another, as does Daris Carlon. And then you have a regular boss theme, followed by one for a significant emotional boss fights such as Sheena and Regal, fighting of the spirit returns from Tales of Fantasia for summon spirit fights. It's absolutely incredible and adds personality to each type of boss fight so they don't seem like another plain old boss fight with little to no meaning. This isn't even all of the battle themes, there are so many of them that I couldn't possibly name them all. And the voice acting. Tales has always been hit or miss when it comes to voice acting. Just take a look at Tales of Eternia and you'll know exactly what I mean. As for Symphonia, the voice acting is great, but one thing that amused me is Lloyd. Lloyd is voiced by Scott Manvell. Do you know who Scott Manvell is? I'm sure you've heard his voice before. He also voiced Robin from Teen Titans. Knowing this, I just constantly expected Lloyd to yell out, Titans go! when setting off on a mission to attack a human ranch or something. I know it wasn't ever going to happen, but I feel like it would have been an amusing development. Other standout voice actors were Jennifer Hale as Sheena, Tara Strong as Persea, Crispin Freeman as Regal, and Cam Clark as Kratos. The voice cast is stellar and they all do spectacular jobs. However, if you don't quite vibe with English voices, as I know many people do not in the JRPG community, you do have the option of Japanese voices. And as mentioned before, the Japanese voice track does include voices during the aforementioned skits. So that's always a benefit. I still prefer English voices myself, as I don't speak Japanese, but still, the voice acting in either language breathes amazing life into the game. So what about how the game plays out? Is it long, or can you blow it out over an intense weekend gaming session? Well, it's probably one of the longer Tales games. My playthrough for this review took me exactly 60 hours when I made my clear save. That was me doing most of the side content. The only things that I didn't really do was the arena side quest with the optional fights there and the super boss. There were a few parts of the game that I felt were longer than they needed to be, but overall the game does play out pretty nicely. The only real complaint that I have is after you do the Fire Shrine and cross Osa Trail, you have a few options. You can either go do the events in Azuld and go over to Palma Costa, which is commonly referred to as the Easy Path, 
Or you can do the hard path, which is where you go over to Hema and do the events in Luin and Asgard. Unfortunately, the game doesn't really give you a clear indication if you've triggered the easy or the hard path. If you don't know what you're doing, you can easily get lost. And as I hadn't played the game in over 10 years, I ended up getting lost myself and spent an extra 2-5 to five hours talking to every NPC trying to figure out where to go to progress with the plot. Other than this one hiccup though, the game is paced super well and you don't feel as if you're dealing with filler content that exists solely to extend the length of the game. It's a well paced game and even after 60 hours, chances are you'll still feel sad that the game is ending as you'll want to continue the adventure across the world with your new friends. Which leads me to my next point. The game has a sort of new game plus option. As you play through the game, you will earn grade, and when starting a new game, you can use that grade for extra benefits. Benefits such as increasing experience, harder difficulty, increase the amount of items that you can carry. So it gives a little bit of benefits to for replays, which is good because this game has many branching points. For example, like I said, the easy and hard mode. And later on in the game, there's this one scene where you go out in the middle of the night with a character and have a little intimate conversation. Each one of these conversations are different. You have eight characters you can have these conversations with, so it adds a little bit of difference to it. It's a nice little benefit of playing through the game over and over and gives a little bit of replay value. So, issues with the remaster. Yeah, there's a few things in this remaster that aren't as high quality as the original release, and a little bit disappointing. First and foremost, probably the one thing you've heard everybody talk about is the frame rate. Back when Tales of Symphonia got its enhanced port on the PlayStation 2, the game was cut from 60 frames per second down to 30 due to the PlayStation 2 not having as powerful of a graphics processor as the GameCube did, which was completely understandable back then. However, 20 years later, this game still has that 30 FPS. The only reason I can imagine is that the game would have to be redone and it would require too much effort to restore the 60 FPS of the original. There is, however, a PC mod that can restore 60 FPS, but it breaks the game in hilarious ways. Next, as this game is based on the Japan-only PS2 release, it has new content that wasn't originally in the GameCube release, such as new mystic arts, new altered texts, and new combination unison attacks. Since all this content is new, and battle voice acting is such a huge part of the combat in this game, new voices had to be recorded. Unfortunately, these new English voices are incredibly quiet. I mean, whisper quiet. Almost so quiet that if you didn't have the volume up, you would think it was dead silent. I'm not sure why this happened, but for some reason, you can hardly hear them. So when you use techniques like Rock Pillar, Blazing Tempest, or Shining Bind, expect silence. Unless you have your TV volume incredibly high. Maybe there was a mixing issue, or maybe they used different voice actors and kept it silent to hide the fact that it wasn't the same voice actor? I honestly have no idea. Luckily, this only affects the English dub of the game. If you're using the Japanese dub, it isn't of any real concern since the PS2 part of the game was already fully recorded. The last few issues are minor, but unfortunately, I wasn't really able to get footage of them since they happened randomly and I couldn't replicate them. First of all, there are random empty spaces of text. Like when formatting the text, there's an extra line break. It's so weird. Another weird issue is occasionally there are parts of the game where the spoken dialogue doesn't match the text on screen. For example, there's one scene where the spoken dialogue says, You son of spoiler. But the dialogue on the screen says, You're spoilers, son. It's minor and not a huge deal but it seems a bit strange with the localization. The final, but most amusing, is one where animations of enemies in dungeons just break. Every once in a while, enemies will just start gliding towards you. However, if this happens with a humanoid enemy, they take it to a whole other level. If their animations break, they will assert their dominance on you and start T-posing directly towards you. It's incredibly amusing and entertaining. Not all issues have to be detrimental to the experience, but this one in particular is great. So there we have it. Tales of Symphonia is a game that seems to have withheld the test of time and is still an absolute gem in 2024. Have you played Tales of Symphonia? What were your thoughts on it? 
Let me know in the comments below and let's get a conversation going and reminisce about one of the best games in the series. If you are enjoying what you're seeing around here and love JRPG content, make sure you share the video around, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. You'd be crazy to miss even a second of Shinky JRPGs. This has been Justin, aka Shinky of Shinky JRPGs. As always, thanks for popping by and have a wonderful day. Thank you.